Executive Director of Dow Global Field Services. Hi, Dana. Hi. Today you gave a presentation about leveraging uh, third-party partnerships. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, it was a, a very, very good topic to, to talk on, and it's something that I've been knee-deep in and down and beyond for a vast number of years. And I think the, the kind of the core aspect of the message today was how do you evolve from vendor management through partner management into true partnership? Because that's when leveraging, you get the true leverage and benefit out of third parties by getting to a real partnership uh, level. If you don't get there, you tend to have conversations which are more around contracts, which are more around, you know, well, this is all you pay me to do, rather than really focusing on your customers, which is, is what you need, it's what all of us need to be doing. And if you can evolve into a true partnership model, the customer becomes the very center of what it is you're doing and, and everything else becomes a byproduct of that. Right. So in the field service industry right now, mm -hmm. there's been this shift towards manufacturers being customer centric. When do mm -hmm. you think that shift came about and what prompted this shift? Uh, it came about because it was driven by customers. Uh, and, and it's you know it's critically important that we we all of us listen to our customers, and uh, you know as you know the, the, certainly at the lower level of, of products became much more commoditized, you know providing the servitization component of the manufacturing piece became a big differentiator for customers. So no longer were they happy to just you know well ship the product out to me and I'll do everything from there. They're actually looking for co companies like ourselves, like Dell, to do a lot more than just sell them product. Right. They're looking for a lot more value to be added to the product, mm -hmm. you know, from a services perspective, from a configuration perspective, and from an ongoing support service perspective after they've installed it, or hopefully we've installed it in their environment for them. Mm -hmm. So how did Dell kind of transform with this evolving customer? You're talking about Dell's transformation over the past mm -hmm. couple of years. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, um, I think probably you know one of the, the the key elements of that would be what we're calling the new Dell business model, where we're actually you know from a, a manufacturing perspective, we're actually bringing a lot of that closer to our customers. Uh, we're actually doing a lot more configuration services, not necessarily in the factory, but in second touch locations that are a lot closer to our customers, uh, and that's truly where they see the value being added. You know, we're as a company looking to become much more of a solutions provider, an end-to-end -end solutions provider for our customers, because again, that becomes a big differentiator. And we believe we're one of very few uh, companies who can actually provide a kind of a true end-to-end -end service and solution for, for customers out there. So what would the return on investment be in being an end-to-end -end solution provider? Return on investment is you get more customers, you get more right. satisfied customers, you get more loyal customers, and, and loyal customers tend to stick with their uh, with, with their preferred uh, companies and preferred vendors like ourselves. So if if you do provide them what they need, uh, and you do provide them the services that they value, you know the return on investment is more business so you've got higher revenue you've got higher margin because services margin is traditionally higher than product margin right. uh, so it all adds up to a win-win customers are getting what they want and we're getting increased revenue and margin right. and this evolving customer when do you think customer expectations kind of change not just getting the product but actually wanting that solution do you think it was in the past 10 years past five <coughs> I think it's it's been a it's one of these things that's probably snuck up on everybody. It's been a gradual evolution, uh, and as I said, as the mis the mystique and the mystery has been taken out of IT, which it has to a large degree, we're all become a hell of a lot more IT literate over the last number of years. So a lot of the the supposed complexity in in IT has been taken away, and and customers uh, are looking for you know. IT not to be something that causes them problems or something that causes them, you know, a lot of money, but something that actually enables their business, uh, and that's that, that's a key thing. It's probably the single biggest thing is IT being a true enabler for for customers to do what it is they need to do in their business, as opposed to being a distraction and something that causes them, you know, to have to hire a lot of. Uh, people in their business that are not core to their business. I, I kind of tend to use banks as an example. You know, banks are in the business for managing people's money. Right. Yeah, not having huge big IT departments to manage their IT infrastructure. So they will look to companies like ourselves to help them do that. So to have a less complex environment that can deliver all that they need and deliver all the support they need as well.
When I was talking to your colleague, Bob Feiner, he was talking about a new initiative that Dell has, which is customer least effort. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, I think what, what we've, you know, we, th there's been the very traditional way of measuring customer satisfaction, which is very transactional. Right. Uh, so you're basically asking a customer, how did their last transaction with you go from their perspective? Right. Uh, and what you've got to be careful of, it may, may have gone as they expected, but it may, be, may not have been what they needed. Right. So the kind of evolution from there was on to something called NPS, which is Net Promoter Score, right. where you're actually measuring how the likelihood of customers to repurchase either your services, your products, or recommend you to other people. Right. Uh, and then kind of following on from that is we've started to measure well, how much effort do our customers have to go through when they're dealing with us in the, in the, in the event of a service failure or a service right. that they require. Uh, and that, that's shown us a lot of very interesting things, is yeah. that you know, a lot of what we think is there, historically we would have thought is the kind of right way or the right process to have, actually causes our customers a lot more effort. Yeah. So we've taken a lot more time to look at our processes through a customer set of lenses yeah. to try and minimize the amount of effort they have to go through when dealing with us when getting a field service event. Uh, and that's actually taught us a hell of a lot. Uh, yeah. And we'll continue to evolve that, we'll continue to fine tune that. But as I said, the key thing here is the less effort customers need to spend on an intervention, the happier they tend to be with the end result of that intervention. Right. And in your presentation today, you were talking about a kind of misstep that happened before Dell Services, just that making basic assumptions that maybe a one size fit all mm -hmm. um, in one region would work in another. Um, can you maybe talk about that a little bit, and like the differences between working in, say, Europe as opposed to like Asia or Morocco as you were talking about? It's, uh, yeah, it, it's been a big learning for us and I think it's everybody in our industry has been learning uh, and I think we probably all broadly made the assumption that, you know, the emerging countries, you know, the Russias, the Chinas, the Indias, Brazils, etc. would get to a saturation point where we could just apply the, the, the kind of more mature model on, on top of it uh, and that's not proven to be the case. Uh, and I think that's a, that's a critical learning for, for not just us but for everybody in the industry that culture plays a huge part in how you set yourself up to deliver service and I think the example I gave to, today was you know how we uh, thought that a next business day type service an on-site next business day service was something that would be a big differentiator and be truly valued in, in a lot of emerging countries and as it turned out culturally that's not something a lot of those countries would even value in fact the opposite they would they would consider that to be a, a reason not to do business with you they're much more comfortable with using carry-in centers with drop-off points to have their systems repaired uh, and in fact we're even happier to wait a period of time, sometimes up to two weeks for that system to come back because that's what they've had and that's the service they like to have. Uh, so again, you know, making the assumptions that the, what, the, what works for the more mature markets is going to work in the developing markets is a very dangerous thing. And I think the lesson for us all to be learned there is to take the time to talk to partners in those countries, to talk to customers in those countries, to understand what it is they value before deciding what type of infrastructure you need to set up to deliver service in those places. So if you could advocate one single best practice for any service industry trying to deliver on these customer expectations, trying to overcome the hurdles and the challenges that they're seeing in the field service industry space, what would that be? Single biggest thing I would say is listen to your technicians in the field. They talk to your customers every single day. They see customers a hell of a lot more than any of us who are sitting in management positions managing that business mm -hmm. and they have a lot more valuable and up-to-date information on what customers and different customer sets are actually looking for when it comes to field service. Um, the, the, kind of the, the way I like to put it is don't think you can run a field service business by looking at a scorecard every day. Yeah? Talk to your people. So talk to your field techs, talk to your customers, and take the time to get to know what it is that's driving them in their business uh, and what they really need to have IT and field service, for that matter, as an enabler for their business. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for being here today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much for having me. Pleasure spending the time with you.